So a Salafi, a known Salafi, as in he's, he's on YouTube, known, he call, refers to himself as, I think, the exorcist. So he uh, has something called the Diaries of an Exorcist. And his name is Abu Hasnain. I mean, he's from Birmingham, same city from where I'm from. And he's done this video, so a few people sent it to me. So I watched this video and it's the video's titled Should We Follow? Should we follow Mufti Abu Laith? <laughs> I thought, nice. Could it be that this is a genuine question about following me? Could it? <laughs> and and then, and then I slapped myself back into my senses and thought, hell no, of course not. So I watched this. I watched this video. It's about an hour long, right? It's dedicated to me. So I thought, come on, I owe him that much to at least watch <laughs> a video dedicated to me. <laughs> So let's take, so he, he goes through the clip and he says that, look, uh, should we follow Mufti Abu Layth? Mufti, he puts it in speech marks. But I'm going to be fair. Let's be fair, right? He wasn't overall rude. Overall. There were some digs that he made at me. Uh, he, he referred to me acting like a clown or being a clown or a joker or things like this. And, and he made a statement like he has no knowledge. OK, which <laughs> which I kind of I thought, OK, <laughs> if you say so, Sheikh Ustad Alamat al-Dahar, Faqih al-Asar, if you say so. So I thought that was a dig. But generally, throughout his whole um, thing, he did refer to me as Mufti. And he didn't generally insult me or go for personal attacks. So I give him credit for maintaining that kind of some some sense of uh, uh, decency in, in addressing me. So, OK. <laughs> so, Ar-Raqi, this Raqi exorcist, Abu Hasnain. Right. Now. So he begins this thing by telling people he plays clips from my Monday nights with Mufti and then refutes them. And he says that this guy is an absolute deviant. I'm an absolute deviant and I'm a shaitan like I myself admit to being a shaitan. And he says that he is just misguiding people. All he does is he reaffirms their whims and desires based on two things based on reason and based on science. So he says that these two things, and then, sorry, a third thing, he finds some opinion within Islam to justify their wishes for them. So he says these three things are what uh, this guy does. And then he said that he has a big following. <laughs> I, was, I was like, really? I got to say, that part played well into my ego. <laughs> Why lie, people? <laughs> I would lie and act all humble, but lying is haram. <laughs> so he massaged my ego a little bit there. I was like, you naughty, naughty. You teasing me, you naughty, naughty. <laughs> so let's take a look at some of what he said. Yeah. So he begins by saying that, look, his beliefs are completely deviant. And he calls to a topic that I've discussed, a question I've been asked in the past. And the question is, is the Quran created or uncreated? And I said that this whole discussion is absurd, which I stand by today. And I say it's absurd. So he, he then pauses this. And no, sorry. And in the clip, I say that, look, there's been a difference of opinion people this discussion has no meaningful outcome and scholars like Shokani have said look it doesn't matter what a person believes because this discussion does can't even truly be understood nobody even understands what they're saying and I said look this discussion is just absurd leave it alone so he then follows up with his commentary <laughs> and he says Astaghfirullah and the guy's got a really long beard. I'm not mocking the brother, but it's probably about this long, to be honest with you. 
it's really long, right? So he's got like a really long beard and like a bald head. I'm not mocking him, but I'm just describing him just so you got pictures right now. He says that Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, brothers, brothers, the Salaf of this Ummah, they sacrificed so much for this belief. Amr ibn dinar and the Tabi'een and the Sahaba taught them, will you say it's absurd to the companions? Will you say it's absurd to the companions? So I'd like to pause this here. Pause. Pause. <laughs> companions. <laughs> Did the companions say it to you? Because the companions never even discussed Aqidah. They never ever discussed Aqidah. So I'm going to first of all ask you, can you bring me where the companions discussed that the Quran is created or uncreated? <laughs> there is no such discussion, people, ever, ever. The quote he brought was the uh, Tabi'i saying that the Quran is the kalam of Allah, the speech of Allah. Nobody denies the Quran being the speech of Allah. This discussion is to do with whether the Quran was created or uncreated. It was a useless discussion. That was a political discussion that began in the time of Ma'mun. Right. It was useless. It had no... I mean, it was just absolutely useless. From in the time of Ma'mun, Mu'tasim and Mutawakkil. This is it. The three caliphs. It was it had no outcome. People didn't even understand. If the Sahaba had spoken about this issue, there wouldn't have been a discussion. Because people would have said, look, there's the hadith. The discussion over. So there would be no discussion. Imam Malik never spoke about it. Abu Hanifa never spoke about it. This discussion didn't exist in their lifetime. The Salaf are the, the companions, the, the Tabi'een, their students, and then their students, the Tabi'a Tabi'in, people like Imam Malik, people like Imam Ahmad, who we love and respect, are not from the Salaf. Okay, they are not from the Salaf. We love and respect him, but he's not from the Salaf. So, this discussion didn't happen during the Salaf's time. So when you said, so he said, so many of the Sahaba taught this. Please bring me just one. Just one. Mwah. Ja. Ja. Lekea. Ja. Ja. Ja, go. Ja, Simran, ja. Jile apni zindagi. <laughs> go. I'll, I'll wait here for you. Bring me just one narration from the Sahaba where they taught that the Quran was created or uncreated. This dialogue didn't exist. So before you're about to refute me for calling something absurd, at least do that much homework. At least do that. Come on. Come on, ya. <laughs> You can do better than, you're better than that. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Next point. So, he says that, what, well, I had to make some bullet points of what is some of these main topics. And just by the way, before I move on from that topic, just to explain, this discussion was a political discussion. It was, I shared a talk. In fact, there's a really good book I recommend you read. It's called Early Inquisitions in Islam. And it covers this topic so interestingly. And people going on about Ma'mun, Ma'mun, the caliph of the time, he dies four months into this inquisition. This inquisition lasts for 15 years. Imam Ahmad is one of the early people. What about the other years that goes on? Why was this such a big deal? This debate had nothing to do really with belief. This debate was to do with the fact Right, let me just explain this. This debate, right, was to do with the fact that the caliphs wanted to believe and establish that they are the greatest authority on earth. They are God's shadow on earth. They used to call themselves that Dil Lur Rahman Fil Ard, that they are the shadow of God on earth. Now, they, there is no higher authority than them. The caliphs had this kind of superiority complex, just as the kings of Europe called themselves divine, that they were divinely chosen. So 
somebody had said that, wait a minute, but the Qur'an is the word of God and the word of God is uncreated and you're a human and you are created. So technically, you are not the utmost. So the Caliph's kind of angle was that, wait a minute, no, the word of God which we have is also created and subject to interpretation by men. And I am created and I am the authority of God, the hand of God on earth. So, I reign supreme. This is what the debate was about. It was political. It had nothing to do really with theological aspects. And it doesn't mean anything because the Mus'haf, which is a book, the Qur'an, which is a book, everybody knows that this book, the Mus'haf, is created. You can't even understand what this debate is about. That's why it is absurd. Okay, moving on. Moving on. Right, then he, what else does he say? Oh, right, the beard. The beard. So this was one point, point he brought up. He says that, look, Mufti Abu Layth, anything he wants to say, he just brings up a quote of some scholar. And he says that this scholar has said this. So he brings my quote, sorry, my clip, where I'm asked about the beard. And I said, look, Qadi Iyad said, where I'm asked about shaving the beard, is it haram? And Qadi Iyad said that that is uh, not haram in his commentary on Sahih Muslim. And I quote how many of the Shafi'i have said things like that as well. He then says, oh, look, huh? the Prophet said, huh? the Prophet said, grow your beard. Uh, well, here comes the second surprise. You bring me just one hadith where the Prophet said how to have a beard. Just one. Just one. Uno. 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 <laughs> Solamente. Just one. I'm as asking you for one hadith. The Prophet lived as a Prophet for, we're talking 22 to 23 years of his life, teaching and preaching. Surely the beard is something that must have been so important, allegedly. Bring me one hadith. Where the Prophet said how to have a beard. Not Ibn Umar saying that trimming his beard, saying I saw the Prophet cut his beard here. Because many of the Arabs used to cut their beard here. Not just the Prophet. That could have been done as a cultural aspect. It could have been done as a, as a personal preference. The Prophet's personal preference may have been to trim the beard here. Where did the Prophet once in one hadith teach people how to grow a beard? You mean he never did that? Oh, but I thought it was an obligation. Oh yeah, it is an obligation. But how do I do it? I mean, do it how Sheikh Fulan has explained in the book. How Sheikh Bimbaz has explained. Oh, but, but are you just quoting scholars to me? Who you said I shouldn't be quoting scholars to you? You nutty nutty. <laughs> you just, are you doing the same thing back to me? Hamari <laughs> Billy. That one. <laughs> so, right, so you're just quoting scholars back to me. Ah, oh, so your scholars are okay. But my scholars are wrong. Acha cha cha cha. Acha cha cha cha. This, now, can you see the absurdity in this Puritanist way of thinking? Now, they say, why do you, why do you just quote one scholar from here or there? Tell me, is truth a democracy? Do I need a numbers game for it to be true? No, truth can be even if one person said it. So why, why, why can that one person be wrong? Why does it have to be wrong just because you claim to have a democracy? Why do I have to follow your democracy? Huh? <laughs> Let's pick up another point that he said. Right. Oh, people, music. I won't go through so many, just a few points. Music is something he picked up on. He said a person is asking him, 
and he plays my clip where somebody asks me about music and I said, look, there's nothing proven to categorically to demonstrate music is haram. And I think that's what I say in the, I don't. And yes, I add that lyrics do not make something haram. So even if uh, the words are talking are sexual or they're talking about things like fighting or things like that, that does not make something haram. I understand you may not want to listen to it or you may not want your children to listen to it, but God hasn't declared it haram. So there's a big difference here. So he says, Asta, let me. He says, Astaghfirullah. You see, brothers, you see, brothers and sisters, you see the dangers of following people with no knowledge. The muftis in our day and age have no knowledge, brothers. They declare everything. They just follow the whims and desires. The Prophet ﷺ said that music is haram. In fact, there is a hadith. He said that there is a hadith that music, that singing brings hypocrisy in the heart. Brings hypocrisy in the heart, the way water gives rise to vegetation. Allah, let, let me pause him there. Pause. <laughs> Welcome back, Raki Exorcist G. First of all, let me quote this hadith to you in Arabic Al Ghina Yumbitun Nifaq. كَمَا يُنْبِطُ الْمَاءَ الْبَقْلِ Ah, ah, ah. Da'if, da'if hadith, da'if. This hadith has been transmitted. He, he quoted from Ibn Mas'ud. It's been transmitted from Ibn Mas'ud to the Prophet by five narrations, five chains. And it stops with Ibn Mas'ud on three different chains. It has been brought in the books of people like Ibn Abi Dunya, by Daylami, by Bayhaqi, in Abu Dawood, in Hakim. Every single chain is criticized as weak, munkar, mutar. It is every chain is mu'allal. There isn't a single sahih hadith that you can bring in this bab. Allah, at least bring me a sahih hadith. You're a Salafi for God's sake. <laughs> Wait, he says, I quote, just random opinions, is it? Let me see. One moment, one moment, one moment. Un momento, por favor. Esperanme, esperanme. Just let me see, let me see, people. Right. All these hadith. This is Imam Shawkani, right, in his Nailul Autar, who is a great muhaddith, a great scholar, after bringing all the hadith on music. وَقَدْ أَجَابُ الْمُجَوِّزُونَ And those who said it's permissible music is. عَنْهَا بِأَنَّهُ قَدْ ضَعَّفَهَا جَمَاعَةٌ مِنَ الظَّاهِرِيَّةِ وَالْمَالِكِيَّةِ وَالْحَنَّابِلَةِ وَالشَّافِعِيَّةِ he says, but men, people said many of the great scholars have declared all these hadith to be weak. Allah. وَقَدْ تَقَدَّمَ مَا قَالَهُ إِبْنَ حَزَمْ And he's brought the comments of Ibn Hazm. وَوَافَقَهُ عَلَى ذَلِكَ أَبُو بَكَرْ إِبْنُ عَرْبِي فِي كِتَابِهِ الْأَحْكَامِ And the Don Maliki of Al-Andalus, right? Abu Bakr ibn Arabi, the legendary judge from Muslim Spain, has said, Lam yasih fi tahrimi shay. There isn't a single hadith that is sahih in the prohibition of music. He says, Wa kazalika kal al ghazali wabn al nahu fi al umda an ghazali wabn al tahir. And the great muhaddith ibn al tahir, right? The great muhaddith, right? Who set about what we call today as siha sitta and stuff like that. إِنَّهُ لَمْ يَسِحْ مِنْهَا حَرْفٌ وَاحِدٌ Not a single letter from these ahadith is sahih. وَالْمُرَادِ Obviously, and we're talking about hadith going back to the Messenger of Allah. 
Otherwise, nobody is an authority except God and his messenger on matters of religion. Right. So you bring to me what Allah and his messenger have said in clear, conclusive, unbroken, unblemished, non-blemished chains. As I need and I will accept what you're saying. Ibn Hazm says, إِنَّهُمْ لَوْ أَسْنَدُوا حَدِيثًا وَاحِدًا If they brought even one hadith on the prohibition of music, فَهُوَ إِلَىٰ غَيْرِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ They can only bring it to other than the Prophet of God, not to the Prophet of God. And he says, وَلَا حُجَّ فِي أَحَدٍ دُونَ Let me quote another Don Maliki Al-Fatihani, whose commentary I have here, by the way, on... Right... But... It's over, <laughs> whose commentary has been brought into print and I'm waiting for his commentary on the Risala of Ibn Abi Zayd in Maliki Fiqh to be brought out as well soon. Now, Fakahani says, Lam a'lam, I do not know fi kitab illahi wa la fi sunnati hadithan sahihan sarihan fi tahrim al-malahi. I do not know a single clear hadith or wording in the book of Allah or the messenger of Allah, uh, his words that show that music is haram. People, 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 people. Right, now, let me show some people, by the way, that have argued in its defense of things like music. Imam al-Haramain says in his Nihaya, وابن بالدم, that بنقل الإثبات, that the, they say from uh, people have reported Abdullah ibn Zubayr, the great Sahabi, he would have many kind of, uh, he would own many kind of uh, singing and dancing girls that would sing and dance for him. Now, Abu Faraj al Asbahani transmits from Hassan ibn, Hassan ibn Thabit that he would listen to uh, music. Adfawi. Transmits that Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. This is Shokani bringing this, by the way, the great muhaddith. That Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, Kana yasma'u min jawarihi qabla al khilafa, before he became the khalif. He quotes, by the way, this person quotes Umar ibn Abdul Aziz in his thing, Refutation Against Me. Look, before he became khalif, he used to listen to music. Ibn Sam'ani says that Tawus, the great Tabi'i and student of Ibn Abbas, saw that as fine. Ibn Qutayba, Sahib al Imta, and Sahib al Imta, and the Qadi of Medina, the great Qadi of Medina from the Tabi'een, Sa'ad ibn Ibrahim, would say, would, would say that music is permissible. Ruyani from the Shafi'iyah transmits from Qaffal that the madhab of Imam Malik is Ibahatul Ghina ibn Ma'azif, is that music and musical instruments and singing is permissible. He says that Qaffal transmits that from the Maliki madhab. Al-Ustad Abu Mansur Al-Furani transmits from Imam Malik as well. Abu Talib Al-Makki in his Qut Al-Kulub and Shu'ba Annahu that he would Annahu Sami'a Tumburan musical instruments Fi Bayt Al-Manhal Ibn Amr Al-Muhaddith Al-Mashur in the great Muhaddith Amr Ibn Al-Manhal in his Manhal Ibn Amr in his house he would listen he could hear musical instruments being played. Abu Fadl ibn Tahir in his book on the permissibility of music shows that the, there was no dispute between the people of Medina that flutes and musical instruments were permissible. And then Ibn Tahir says this is what the Zahiriya unanimously went to. And Adfawi says Lam yakhtalif al-naql fi nisbat al that nobody is, uh, there is no dispute about the great Qadi of Medina before Imam Malik Right, uh, Sa'ad ibn Ibrahim, uh, the great Qadi from the Tabi'een, Ibrahim ibn Sa'ad, and him uh, listening to music and saying it's permissible. There's no dispute about that. Right, so these are some things I bring to you people. Some things. Allahu Akbar. So look, when you want to refute me, <laughs> by all means, refute me. But at least bring a Sahih Hadith. The only, yeah, you could have brought stronger hadith than the one you brought. The one you brought, that al-ghina yumbitul nifaq kama yumbitul ma al-baqal in Abu Dawood and Hakim and Daylami and Abu Naim al-Asbahani and uh, in al-Bayhaqi and these books. These are incredibly weak. 
<laughs> यार इस ए, अच्छा नहीं लगता यार फॉर मी टू करेक्ट अलफी ऑन ऑन हदीस नॉट बीइंग साहिब इट डज नॉट नाइस यू नो दिस वन नो नाइस राइट लेट्स लेट्स गो ऑन लेट्स गो ऑन He then says Okay now he brings an issue uh he brings a question that I'm asked about anal sex <laughs> where somebody asks me and I crack a joke about it So he says that look at this person's laughing and mocking and cracking jokes and is this how the people of God are spo- supposed to be is this how they are Sufyan Thawri rahimahullah would say that you know when he quotes Sufyan Thawri who I love by the way Sufyan Thawri so first point before we go on to the main point Sufyan Thawri <laughs> what a person he chose wallahi this is a godsend you know from all the examples he could have chosen he chooses Sufyan Thawri Sufyan Thawri was so known for his sense of humor that when he would laugh he would fall over on the floor stamping his feet and that's what was known about him. <laughs> so thank you for qu- quoting Sufyan Thawri because I think I'm in good company here because if Sufyan Thawri was here both me and him would be laughing our heads off. <laughs> But let's sorry I digress I digress sorry sorry yaar sorry sorry bhaiya let's come back to the point right so let's right so he speaks about I I'm asked a question about anal sex right <laughs> as as I often am asked on my live and unrestricted ah <sighs> what a pain in the butt of an issue huh? <laughs> right so i'm asked this question and i say that look there has been a difference of opinion on this matter right there has been a difference of opinion on this matter although the majority of the, so this is what i'm saying first of all i i crack a joke and a laugh because the person says instead of asking me anal sex he says anal to anal something so i crack a joke about annulling things and <laughs> which is quite funny actually i have to say watching myself back i i kind of became a true fan of myself <laughs> but anyway so it was actually quite funny and i think if he didn't enjoy that humor then he must be living a miserable life i got to say got to say so anyway beyond the jokes i then answer the question by saying I then answer the question by saying uh, look majority of the ulama although they saw this haram there's a difference of opinion many malikis did not consider this haram other malikis did and there's been a debate on the matter some people I said there's narrations going back to Ibn Umar saying anal sex is not haram but many scholars dislike this based on hygiene and i quote how qadi iyad transmits from some people and and as amongst them if you remember those of you who watched my previous episodes and i was introducing some of the books and it's not here now so and i was speaking about one of the great uh, greatest hadith scholars of muslim spain abu muhammad al asili uh, who brought back revived bukhari uh in muslim spain and he's from the kind of prototypes of people like it's over a thousand years ago and he's like the from the prototypes of people like ibn abdul bar the kind of four runners to them um now he began to teach bukhari from a fiqh perspective but he is also one of those scholars who considered anal sex not to be haram uh, but discouraged it and i mention how qadi yad mentions these people and he says that look and th- this was more a hygiene kind of thing you have to remember as, as well the day and age they lived in and stuff like this so when i finish <coughs> sorry so when i f- he then finishes that clip and he says astaghfirullah 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 brothers 
Khuzayma ibn Thabit, he says, transmits from the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the Prophet said that if you have sexual intercourse with your wife in her anus, I'm just quoting him, sorry for the language people, but in her anus, then God will not look at you on the day of judgment. And then he says, Abu Huraira radiallahu an says that the Prophet cursed the man who has sexual intercourse with his wife in her anus. So he says, look, this person, I quote to you the clear words of the messenger of God, and this person quotes these scholars. Now, first of all, I want us to pause here. Pause, pause. Let's pause the exorcist for a moment. <laughs> I just want to say here, I did not say to people, <laughs> go about rampantly having <laughs> anal sex. I did not say that anywhere. Right. <laughs> what I said was there was a difference of opinion in the matter. That's what I said. Now, let's come back to his point. So the messenger of Allah said, and. Well, it looks like we're stuck. Are we stuck here? Are we stuck? Hmm. Let's take a little assistance. Oh, let's go back to the great scholar of hadith, Imam Shawkani, in his Nail Autar. Oh, which is, by the way, a commentary on certain hadith collected by Ibn Taymiyyah's grandfather, uh, the Munta, uh, which was called Muntaq al Akbar, which were a hadith from mainly from Bukhari, Muslim, and then other books as well. But let's go to this commentary here and this discussion. Oh, Khuzaymat ibn Thabit. Let's read the Arabic for his hadith. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam naha an ya'ti ar-rajulu imra'atahu fi duburi hada. In his words that, you know, that you cannot have anal intercourse. And it's transmitted in the book of Ahmad, uh, Musnad of Ahmad and Ibn Majah. What I'll also tell him is that, uh, he didn't mention that by the way, but I'm, I'm telling you where it's, it's also transmitted by Imam al-Shafi'i. But its chain has somebody called Umar ibn Uhiha. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Umar, this Umar ibn Uhiha is not an acceptable narrator. <laughs> Nobody knows who he is. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let me help him, let me help him. But there's another chain that Imam Nasa'i brings by somebody called Harmi ibn Abdullah. Maybe this will be of some help. Oh, nobody knows who Harmi is either. Oh, <laughs> Baif, Baif hadith. Oh, wait, 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 wait. He also quoted a hadith from Abu Huraira. Let me quote that hadith. Abu Huraira said, the Messenger of Allah said, مَلْعُونٌ مَنْ أَتَايْمْ رَأَةٌ مَنْ أَتَايْمْ رَأَةٌ فِي دُبُرِهَا And he's trans translated it fine. That's also transmitted in the Musnad of Ahmad and Abu Dawood. And that Allah will not look at a person who does that. Well, hmm. This has been transmitted by the books of Sunan and Bazaar. Let me help him. Let me help him. Oh, but its chain has Al, -har, Al Harth ibn Makhlad and Ibn Al Qattan and Bazaar said, We ain't got a clue who he is. <laughs> Wait a minute. But then it's transmitted through other narrations. Oh, but Ibn Adi has said, Isnaduhu da'if! Isnaduhu da'if! <laughs> but, wait a minute, Ibn Hajar said, we've got a stronger chain for it. Let's be fair. Let's be fair, people. Let's be fair. 
Ibn Hajar said in his in his Bulugh al Maram, we've got a stronger chain for that hadith. Oh no, they've got a stronger chain for the hadith. Oh, but it's Mursal. Oh, it's Mursal. Mursal means it's not a connected chain, which makes it naive. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. But he brought a second hadith of Abu Huraira. Let's help him with the second one. Second one. Yeah, take the second one from us. Take it from us. Generosity, yeah, Muslim brothers. Take it from us. From Abu Huraira. Whosoever has anal intercourse, then he has disbelieved in what has been revealed to the Prophet Muhammad. Transmitted by Ahmed and Tirmidhi and Abu Dawood. Okay. Cool. Have we helped him out? We've helped him, people. We've helped him. Oh, but who's transmitting it from Abu Huraira? Abu Tamima? My, oh my, who is this Abu Tamima? Oh, wait a minute. Bukhari says we don't know that Abu Tamima has any transmission from, uh, from Abu Huraira. Bazaar says Hadithun Munkar. Munkar! Munkar! <laughs> Daif Hadith! <laughs> or what does that famous debater say when he's debating a Salafi? He says, Oh, Zaif Hadith, Walo, Wale Wahabio! Why are the Wahhabis, why are the Salafis quoting Daif Hadith? That it doesn't feel right. I have to correct you for your weak Hadith. Yeah, this one not nice. This one, <laughs> this one too much. <laughs> it no feel good, you know. <laughs> I look like I the modernist. You look like the Salafi. <laughs> naughty, naughty. He tried it. Let's be fair. Let's be fair. He tried it. He tried it. <laughs> yeah, Kash. If only he brought me a Sahih Hadith. If only he brought... <laughs> Is this what I'm up against? <laughs> so, so as you can see people, this is the kind of stuff when people want to do a refutation, by all means, refute me. <laughs> refute me. I'm, I'm here to be refuted. <laughs> I'm just sitting here for you to refute me, <laughs> by all means. <laughs> but know <laughs> that there will be for every har sawal ka jawab hoga baba. There will be a response. And lest you are arrogant and forget the verse of God. Wa fawqa kulli dhi ilmin alim. And above each person of knowledge is somebody of greater knowledge. So do not be deceived by these kind of looks or this necklace or this, I don't know, the t-shirt and think that you can quote Da'if Hadith to me and somehow get away with it. <laughs> Falsely attributing nonsense to the messenger of God. Have you no shame? Where is your love? The Prophet said, "Man kathaba alayya muta'ammidan falyatabawwa maq'adahu min an-nar." He who attributes a lie to me, let him prepare for damnation. And that's a sahih hadith. <laughs> ah, it's hilarious, I got to say. And them telling people that look Oh, you know, he does this to, to kind of, for the whims and desires of people. Who am I to conceal the knowledge of this thing? Who am I? And he says that, oh, he just tells people what they want to hear. He's misguided, he's deviant, he's, he's astray, he's fallen. Allah, Allah, I'm fallen. Don't you worry 
about me falling. That is not your concern. Wherever, wherever I fall, I shall fall in His grace. It is nothing to do with you. It is not your concern. Fi rahmatillah, I shall fall if I fall. So the point is, look, you and any of anybody else out there is most welcome to prove concepts, prove me wrong, but bring me categorical evidences from the kitab was sunnah and prove your point and let me respond. So anyway, I thought that was worth some, um, some, some attention. After all, the brother took uh, an entire hour out. Oh, and he said about Rukia. Um, he said about Rukia that this person, the Mufti, claims that the Quran is not a cure for diseases. And he claims that these are just rituals. And it is not a cure for diseases or illnesses. And the Mufti goes against the verse of the Quran. وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ الشِّفَاء <laughs> Have I disbelieved in a verse of the Quran? <laughs> for a moment, I got concerned. But then I thought, let me read the remaining part of the verse. <laughs> For I have once read in a hadith that the Prophet was approached by people. And when they read to him, they placed their hand. The Jewish people, they placed their hand on the other verse. So he couldn't see the remaining verse. So the Prophet said, move your hand and read the entire verse. <laughs> you nutty nutty. Finish the verse. Abe aage par. Read on. Mwah. Read on. Wa nunazzilu minal Qur'an. Ma huwa shifa? We reveal from the Qur'an what is a shifa? Lima fi sudur. For the hearts. For the hearts. The Qur'an is a shifa. For the diseases, the spiritual diseases of the heart. That Allah is saying that. Am I saying it? Toba, 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 toba. <laughs> how can how can I say? I would want I would want to agree with you, but the word of God, yeah. So not only do we see you quoting daif hadith, blaspheming by misattributing them to the messenger of Allah, you. Cutting and pasting the word of God too now? Chopping and pasting? Na mo na na. Na 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 na. Yeah, we had better hopes for you. We had better hopes for you. So, the Quran is a shifa for spiritual, not for... If a person has cancer, you don't say... I know, let's sit down and read the Qur'an and the cancer will go away. The Prophet never taught you to do that. The Prophet said in a hadith, Tadawo. The Prophet said, Tadawo, seek medicine. Go out there and seek medicine. You are meant to seek medicine. You are meant to medicate. You are meant to go and do these things. This, <laughs> you're not supposed to all sit around and start just, oh, the person's got a brain tumor. I know, let's all recite a surah of the Qur'an and then check if it's disappeared. What on earth is wrong with you? Nobody has said that. And God most certainly has not. So please, first you misattributed words to the Prophet of God and now you're misattributing words to God Himself. Toba, toba. Not even the Messenger and God are safe from their words and misattributions. <laughs> so, thank you. So, how could people like me be safe? <laughs> ah, people.
जो शाख से टूटकर गिर पड़े वो पत्ते नहीं हैं हम दोज लीव दैट जस्ट फ्लाई ऑफ द काइंड ऑफ ब्रांच इज एंड फोल वी आर नॉट सच इन आंधियों से कह दो जरा औकात में रहे टेल दी स्टोम्स टू स्टे इन द लेन रेकग्नाइज recognize your worth <laughs> don't aim too high <laughs> other than that nothing but love okay Mwah. for taking the time out to address me right i am charmed right and so for that i <laughs> i hope this has been uh helpful in me educating you and other people as well so other than that people